Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to get right into it. I feel the Lord just pushing me uh, into this word. I hope all is well. Wow, I just feel his spirit. I know this word is for someone um, at this very moment. You know, I know that someone needs it. I just, I can, I can always tell. Um, I can just, I can always tell. And so um, he took me to Philippians 3 and 13. I'm going to start there. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And I hear the Lord, I hear the Lord saying, what are you saying? I hear the Lord saying this. What are you saying? Yes, Lord, I want to pray. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. I thank you for this word, Lord. I thank you for who you are, Lord. I thank you that you are always with us. I thank you for everything, Lord. Yes, everything, everything, everything. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Yes, hallelujah, Lord. Whatever it is you want to say, here I am. Use me, but remove me. Remove my wretched flesh. Let it be your spirit, Lord Jesus. Let it be your spirit, your spirit, your spirit alone. This says whatever you want to say to your children, Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, in your precious, holy, and mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, what are you saying? And I'm not going to be lying. And, and I, I, I don't want to be long, but I want to let, oh, Jesus, I want to let him have his way. <laughs> and, you know, as I was reading, you know, his spirit was kind of unctioning. What are you saying? You know, what am I saying? What are we saying? You know, to press forward. What exactly does that mean? I mean, you know, because we face battles, right? We face situations. We face um, angry people, maybe, you know, I mean, all these things, you know, day-to-day -day life. Um, but what are we saying, right? You know, and, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, everything we say has to, should line up with the word of God, right? You know, um, what does the doctor say? Does it line up with the word of God? I'm not going to believe it, right? What do my friends say? Does it line up with the word of God? If not, I don't really want to hear it. You know, um, what does my family say? Does it line up with the word of God? If not, I don't really want to pay attention to it. You know, um, my God, yes, Lord. It's a time where... Be careful what we're speaking. Every word, you know, the word of God cannot return void. Therefore, I'm striving to speak his words, his words, his words alone. You know, um, some may say you're stuck up, right? Some may say you, you know, maybe you ignore them or you're, you're quiet or, you know, you, you maybe you don't want to hear certain things. Well, this is a time to, you know, Guard your ears, guard your eyes, guard your tongue, what you're saying, what you're listening to, what you're watching, because all of it affects your spiritual life. And I, I don't know why this is, the Lord is just pressing on this. Um, and I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, because we have what we say. You know, um, when you're in the will of God and, and you're walking in the spirit of God, you know, those things that we say, we, we, you know, it's like we call them into existence. Those things that are not, we call them as if they were, you know, there's power in our words. And so I say, what are you saying? 
Oh, well, I don't feel good. Oh, well, the doctor said this. Oh, well, you know, this is going on and that's going on. And, you know, this is why it's very important to choose our words so very carefully. Because, yes, we have issues in this world. Yes, people are hurting. Yes, people are going through situations. Yes, we are going through situations and, and facing battles. But it's it's better to be quiet than to speak something negative. And um, I'm not sure who needed to hear that. Maybe I needed to hear that. <laughs> you know, um, because... Oftentimes when we get in that place where we're just striving to say his words, we're just striving to hear his voice, we're, we're tired of Satan, we're tired of the enemy speaking and talking to us, you know, um, people misinterpret it, people misunderstand it, they think that we're, you know, maybe even cold hearted or, you know, no, we're just focused, there's a uh, hallelujah. There's a kingdom to be released right here on earth, right? There's a time such as now that we were born for, right? So we're called to bring heaven to earth and we can't do that being double-minded. We can't do that um, doing what the world says to do and talking like they talk and walking like they walk and worrying like they worry. Hallelujah. See, we have faith in our father. We have faith in those things we don't see. In fact, we don't have faith in the things that we see. Thank you, Jesus. It's a mighty time in the body of Christ. And maybe some can't see it, and that's okay. You know, I pray that you would have eyes to see, that you would have ears to hear, that you would have a heart that understands that God is not finished yet. And it looks really dark. It looks really dark. And we know we're living in the end. We know Jesus is coming. Okay, we know this because he said it. There's work to be done. Hallelujah. God is raising up an army. Hallelujah. And the question is, what are you willing to give him? Are you willing to give him it all in order for him to use you? Because one day, one day, we'll see him face to face. And none of this will matter. I choose for myself because I can only choose for me. You have to choose for you. But I choose to do those things that will last for eternity. Other than that, mm, I don't want anything to do with it. I don't have time. I'm, I'm going to be about my father's business. And I encourage you to do the same. No matter what they say. No matter what you face, no matter what you might go through, no matter how they look at you, keep on. Why? Because your father in heaven, he honors this. Hallelujah. And ultimately, Jesus is worthy of it all. He is. He died on that cross that we could overcome every sin, every opposition, everything in our life to live for him, to lay our lives down so he can do his work through us. Hallelujah. The name of this word is let go and let's go. <laughs> he gave this word to me about a week ago. It is time to let go of those situations and circumstances in your past. Stop looking around for someone to remind you of who you used to be. Stop looking around for them to validate who I have made you to be. Do you not understand the rejection was my plan? Do you not know my son was despised and rejected? Thank you, Jesus. Wow. It is time to let go. All the old memories, let them go. All the pain, let it go. Stop replaying it over. Stop replaying it all over and over in your mind. Let it go. Wow. Do you think anything you have been through surprises me? Do you think I don't know everything you have done? Guess what? I love you no matter what. Even in those moments you didn't believe or live for me. I loved you the same. It hasn't changed. My love for you is the same today as it was since the day you were born. When you were in that car, I was with you. <laughs> When they turned their backs, I was with you. As you continued down a path of self-destruction, I was with you. I protected you. I kept you safe. I have a plan for all those events you're not proud of. But first, you have to truly let go of the past, the pain, the rejection, the not fitting in. It has a purpose. I allowed all of it. I did this. So in those moments, you would have nobody but me. 
Remember back when my spirit began to show himself strong in your life, even as you were not living right and in so much pain and heartache. See, for years now, I have been healing you. You have spent so much time in my presence. I have washed you. Yet the residue of your past trauma remains in the form of, I wonder what they think. You look around in hopes of acceptance, but to do the work I have for you will make many people upset with you and reject you, talk bad about you, attack your relationship with me, all sent to defeat you. And if you don't let go, if you hold on, I cannot take you where I want to take you because it will destroy you. It will break you. It will bind up your mind and your emotions. Let it all go so we can go. <laughs> Let the shame go. Let the unforgiveness go. Let the memories go. For so long, you have been on the edge of the new, on the edge of the promise, on the edge of more. And the enemy has held you back in the prison of your head. It is time to let go of those situations that were meant and sent to destroy you because I allowed them to prosper you. You have got to change your perspective. Thank you, Jesus. You have to see the ways in which these shortcomings situations and circumstances were truly a blessing in disguise without those scars you wouldn't know me as you do without all that heartache and pain i could not have made you the warrior i created you to be stop going back time and time again and reliving what other people feel or think or want. I am in control. I have chosen to bless you. I have given you this testimony. I have written this scroll knowing all the plans I have for you. Knowing your ladder will be greater than your beginning. Knowing you would be able to survive to get to it. Jesus. This is the end and the beginning. Now let go so that you can truly step into all I have purposed you to do. It doesn't matter what they say or what they think. I have purposed your life from the very beginning. While you sit around wondering why or what's wrong with you, why don't they include you? You miss out on the many ordained moments I have set in place. No more delay. It is time to go. Let go so we can go. There is much work to do, and I have prepared you many years now. I know the battles have been fierce. I know you have been left for dead. But look, you live. You live to proclaim the words I give you. You live to proclaim how good I am to you. You live to proclaim my freedom. You cannot do this if you're still caged up. Right now, I am breaking the bars. I am breaking the chains that have held you back your entire life. See, little by little since you were a young child, the enemy has bombarded you with trauma and things to cut you so deep in hopes you would die in your pain. He just knew you would not make it through what he put on you, what he had others do to you. He counted you dead, dead on arrival. But I have come to give you life in abundance. And in this hour, I am removing the residue that you have to put. But you have a part in it. You must rise up and cast any and all imaginations unlike me down. What you need to understand is who I am. I too faced the pain of betrayal and scandal. <laughs> I too know what it's like to be abandoned, 
to feel motherless and fatherless because nobody seems to understand my pain. I need you to see I understand your pain and no one can understand you like me. Just listen to my voice. Stop letting fear control you. Stop allowing your past pain to hold you back. I had a purpose in all of it and I will use it all for good. What was meant to destroy you? I will use your story to save many. They will know of my goodness because of the anointing and my glory on your life. You must first let go. The enemy seeks to hold you captive. He has used your family and some friends to try to keep you bound, but it is a fresh anointing coming upon your life as you truly lay it all down and break free. Hallelujah. It's time to break free. Hallelujah. 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 Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Freedom. I speak freedom. I speak freedom. I speak freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your story is my glory. <laughs> the more dirty looks, the more they talk about me. The more gossip, the more places being set. At the table, I sat to bless you in the presence of your enemies. Just listen to my still small voice as I raise you up to be my sign and wonder and do things in your life you never thought were possible. In fact, I'm going to need you to think bigger, dream bigger, go beyond your small wonderings and realize my plans are greater and larger than you could ever imagine. I need you to dream again. I need you to get your wonder back. Stop letting the fear of man control you. In this hour, I am breaking those yokes completely off you. The tears may come, the pain may hurt, but the joy coming doesn't even compare. Rejoice in your story. Rejoice in the rejection. Rejoice in being misunderstood. Rejoice in the warfare. Rejoice in the anguish. Rejoice in the pain. Rejoice because now has come the time of delivery where you see the reasoning and a clearer picture of what has truly happened to you being the blessing and anointing on your life. It is time to give birth to that movement I placed inside of you. But before we can move or go, you have to completely let go. The only expectation you can have is good. You must expect miracles, goodness, great things. It is time to let go of the barrenness. Wow. Amen. You know, as I was reading what the Lord wrote, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. It reminded me of where he took me. Philippians 4 and 4, you know, there's power in rejoicing. Why? Because our father has it all in control. He knows the future. He knows it all. He knows why. He knows when. He knows how. He knows who. <laughs> he knows. He knows, he knows, he knows us better than we know ourselves. I hope this word encouraged someone. I've got to go. I love you all. Be blessed. Focus on Jesus. He has a plan. And it's amazing. It just is. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.